Very thankful for this scripture shower. Amen. Really, before you get ready to preach, it really blesses you. Yeah. Especially that one. God is good. Huh, Sister Sarah? Very good. Praise the Lord. So we're here in Romans 2.23, just as Sister Sydney read to you. Thou that makest the law, boast in the law, thou breaking the, the law dishonors thou God. See that? This is the way flesh is. Flesh will never boast in God. If you allow flesh to have its way, it will not take you down the road to boast to God. That's the only road that leads to eternal life. That's the only, you know, Sister Nikki uh, was talking about following Jesus and not le getting, it didn't take long, a day has gone by. That was very good. I was very blessed by that because it, it lines up exactly with what I've been thinking about, about this. There's two ways you're going to be going here. You're going to follow the flesh, which does not boast in God, or you're going to follow God. Advantages don't help you either. We're going to see, we see that here. God is the point, but because God gives you more advantages, it doesn't help. We live in a country, brethren, that is a proven point, it proves this point, that you get advantages that other people in the world get, and it doesn't help you. Not if your focus is on the things that you're getting, not from the one who's given it to you. If your focus is not on God, who is where all good things come from, if you have anything good, it's from God, if that's not your focus, you, it won't take you long. You'll be way off in left field. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're a chosen people of God and that you have all advantages flesh can receive. You see where it ends up. Flesh always boasts in flesh. It, it, it boasts in how good it is, even though we know there's nothing good about the flesh. It'll boast in how smart it is. It'll boast in how able it is to be able to overcome any, anything. But have a hard trial come and find out how fast flesh will just be crushed. God does not and will not work through the flesh. If you're being led by the flesh and you're allowing the flesh to have its way, you don't crucify the flesh and you just allow it to have its way, God will not be working through you. He will not use you not to do good. Oh, he'll use, he'll use you, brother. He'll use you real good for his good. He'll use you real good to further what he's doing and that he gets honored, but not you. It won't be good for you. Amen. You'll be destroyed. You'll be a vessel of dishonor, as Romans 9.21 says. This is why what we were before we came to Christ, but we just let, we leave that behind. Because now we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. That those things before that behind they're behind us. See, Satan will help he'll bring stuff up every once in a while. That's not me no more. That was me before I came to Christ. I that I'm done with that. It is humbling, but it can be put behind you. You can overcome it by seeing who you are in Christ. Because it's God who gets the glory here for what you are now in Christ Jesus. It's God who's receiving the glory and strengthening you. He's the one that's going to be honored by who you are now. Not what you did before you came to Christ, who you are now. We look to God. We are a new creation in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Praise God in that. Huh? Praise God that you have a new start now in Christ Jesus. You don't have to dwell on what happened before. 
Dwell on who you are now. Dwell on God who's working in you right now. We are dead to the flesh. The flesh will put up a fight. I know that. I'm not, am I, I'm not being ignorant here. I'm not being naive to think that you're not going to have a hard time fighting the flesh. I know all too well. I woke up yesterday and I had to say, flesh, I have none of you today. I had to get up today and say, yeah, I know you want to sleep in today, but we're going to have none of that today. Today is the day that we're going to serve the Lord. Yeah, I know you're not having a good day, flesh. That's the way I like it. We owe everything that we have to God. If we're able to get up and get out of bed and get to the brethren, we owe that to God. We are weak. We know that. We're a weak people, fragile. It doesn't take much. Even the strongest among us, it doesn't take much for God to just put a little pressure on us, to humble us. Just, just a little trial. It may be a big trial with you, but for not done for the Lord. The Lord could put something on you that him is just a little, little pressure just to get you back to where you should be. We know we are weak, but he is strong. Amen. See, God, he uses this. He uses this. Those who take pride in themselves, uh, they're, they're going to be crushed quick. God won't, he won't have none of that. But those who take pride in, and put their boast in God, he will use them for vessels of honor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Everything we boast in, it's in God. Mm-hmm. Our strength is in Christ Jesus. This is why we have hard trials sometimes, brother. We can look to God and see this. This is why we have hard trials. We can see that they are designed to humble us and keep us right where he wants us to be. We don't, do we want to be prideful and crushed by God? No, we don't. We don't. We don't. We want to be right where God wants us to be. And he'll use a trial to kind of snap us out of a little haze. Every once in a while, a little haze might come over in the world just kind of coming over you and you're really not seeing things clearly a trial will snap you out of it Amen. and you can see well, I can see God clear now I see yeah. I was starting to get a little bit up into here thinking I was somebody <laughs> and that trial just snapped me out of it thank you Lord thank you Lord Amen. he'll just he'll just humble us just enough not enough he won't crush us yeah. see there's some who's going to be crushed some who's gone past that point. Right. He's already humbled them, humbled them, humbled them, humbled them, and they passed the line. Right. We don't know where that line is, and we don't want to get close to it. Right. Amen. But the humble, they'll see God yeah. in every circumstance. Mm-hmm. They'll see that God is working. They'll see that as his hand is on it. See, see, those who are prideful, they'll say things like, why did God do this to me? See, the, those who are humbled by it will say, thank you, Lord, for not crushing me. Yes, amen. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for keeping me for you, Lord. So we see the trial for what it's designed for. It's designed to crush the flesh. Yeah, bring that flesh down. Crush it. But, this, but see, he's preserving his people in the trial. While the flesh is being crushed, he's preserving his people. Our life is one big trial. Brother, we're we're in a trial right now. Are you going to successfully come out of it for the Lord, boasting in God? Or are you going to be kicking and screaming all the way to hell? How will you come out of this trial? That's the question you want to ask yourself. This, This trial is designed to prepare you for glory or to cast you out. How will the trial end for you? How will it end for us? This life is preparation for what we're going to be doing in glory. Think about this, brother. Think about the saints that God used. We have this on record. We have this down. Now, this isn't for us. To, we don't have to wonder about how God used people, who he used. Abel, he obtained a witness that he was righteous. 
Now, was that easy days that he lived in? Some say it didn't end well for him. I say it did. I say it's still going well for him. Noah, moved by fear, prepared an ark. Was that easy for Noah to prepare? Or have you prepared an ark like Noah did lately? In your later years? Isaac and Jacob dwelled in tabernacles. They looked actively for which hath found it, which hath found which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Yeah. See, they are boasting in God. That's right. Not not in not in his circumstances, but in God. Yeah. Sarah, past age, received strength to conceive seed yeah. from God. God waited until she was past. To, she, if she would have went to a doctor, the doctor said, "Now nah, forget about it. Right. Go home. You're done. This is it's no use. Stop wishing." <laughs> but see, this wasn't about the world, the doctors, the people. This was about what God was doing. That's right. From a dead womb came so many that cannot be numbered. Joseph believed he boasted in God so that he commanded that he have his bones moved when the children of Israel departed. He didn't trust the flesh. See, he was looking past the day of the flesh. The flesh was going to be gone and all that was going to be left was the bones. But he trusted in God. His boast was in God. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. See, flesh would have said, hey, stay right where you're at. God could use you right where you're at. Look at all these things that we could use to benefit God's people. Hey, hey, you could, you could go and, and make sure it's a little cushy for God's people, you know? Stay where you are. Look at the benefit you have. All, to, I mean, to be called, not just to be an Egyptian at that time, but to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Flesh would reason that this would be a good position to help God's people. Yeah, that's right. You don't want to leave where you're at now. God's got you right where he wants you. Mm-hmm. Moses wasn't going to bo- boast in the flesh. Yeah, amen. You know, I'm going to boast in God. I'm getting out of here. I see what's up ahead is better than what we have to work with here. God doesn't need Pharaoh and his, his things his stuff. See, the flesh will say, but see, it's been here for so long. It's never going to change. This will never change. It changes like that. Yeah, that's, right. Amen. that's what God can do. Amen. So we must humbly come to God. Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. John 6, 63. Where are we going to go? Brethren, when we leave this, this room, where can we go? Is there any place of safety that we could go that the flesh could just freely? No, God's going to get wherever somebody is at. It doesn't matter how wicked they are, how much they think they're in charge. God's going to come for them someday, and they're done. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth Grace unto the humble, James 4, 6. See, the proud, they may think they're something. But God, resi- if God's resisting you, you're done. Amen. You got nowhere to go. You got nowhere to run. You got nowhere to hide. The law was given to show an honest heart how much we need a Savior. How much we realize who we are not without God. How much we realize that there's nowhere we can go. We got to have a savior. But the flesh will say, nah, we could do this on our own. We got the law here. We got every, we got every advantage here. So this is what happened here. We've got every advantage. We don't, they didn't say we don't need God, but that's how they lived. They didn't say they didn't need a savior, but that's how they lived. They did not 
boast in God. They boasted in what God had given them. What God had given them. That's what they boasted in. This is what God, the law God gave them, and he, they boasted in that besides God. Will anyone get to judgment day and be able to say, I did it? I'm as good as you, God. Sister June brought this up the other day. It really was sobering to me. Will anybody stand on judgment day and say, I made it, and I'm as good as you? <laughs> no. No, that's going to be a fearful day for the proud. No one's going to be good enough on their own. But people that boast in the Lord, that boast in God, that put their trust in Christ Jesus, they will be able to stand before God and be accepted because of Christ. Today we have people that boast in all manner of things. Flesh hasn't changed one iota. It was no good then, and it's no good now. So what does flesh do? It just kind of rearranges what they boast in. They're going to boast in what church they go to now. I got a good fellowship I come with. I'm going to boast in that. Really? I'm going to boast in that I was saved when I was in sixth grade. And I was baptized. Let me boast in that. Would you say these are any bad things? That you have a good fellowship to fellowship with? That you have yeah, that you're you've been you believe in Christ Jesus and you're baptized? These are all good things, but these are the things that God has done. Yeah, that's right, yeah. We will see these for what God has done, and we're gonna boast in him. Amen. When Jesus came on the scene, they should have seen that this was Jesus Christ came to save him. To save them. But they were so busy. Taking pride in themselves. And what God had given them. That they couldn't even see the Savior. They weren't even looking for a Savior. If they were looking for a Savior. They would have found him in the scriptures. And when he showed up. They would have seen it was him. They knew the scriptures. They didn't know better than anybody. If anybody should have saw Jesus for who he was, they should have been the ones. This shows you how bad flesh gets. How bad it gets when it, it, it starts boasting in what it has instead of the one who gave it to them. They boasted in having the law and they should have been given their boast to God. When they saw Jesus, why did they? Crucify him. Why did he do that? Now you would say, I would never do something like that. Brethren, you would do it tomorrow if you take your eyes off the Lord. You don't know how far you go. If you want to dabble in sin and play games with God, you don't know how far you're going to go. Brethren, we've known people have showed up here in our fellowship who has dabbled in the world and they're gone. Amen. Will the Lord retrieve them? That's not up to me. Yeah. But you don't want to dabble in sin. Amen. Amen. They were built up in pride and they couldn't see that they needed a Savior. Foolish. And we have foolish people today, brother. We have more than they had then. And yeah. still... We have people that put pride in what they're doing instead of the one who gave them what they have. When Jesus came, they missed him altogether. So when, I want to ask you, brother, when Jesus comes back, will he find faith? Will he find you serving him? He's not going to come back in a convenient time. He'll come back when people are sinning. Some people will be serving the Lord and some people will be off in the corner wishing he didn't come back yet. We don't know when he's coming back and that's made for a purpose for us to prepare for him today. To live righteous and holy today. Is there any excuse why we should not live righteous and holy? God doesn't, he doesn't make any excuses, excuses for people to live in sin. Men do. Men have made up excuses for why 
men live in sin. We have today more. So that means we should be, we should be doing more for the Lord. We should be living higher than them before. Amen. Instead, we have people living less that see more. Well, you know what? God's going to, he's going to accept, 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 expect more out of us. Amen. And if not, what happens is greater condemnation is going to be heaped up over those who have more and who deny it, who live contrary to what God has done. De Jesus dealt harsher just for those who say, oh, no, we're all, pff, nobody's perfect. We, but listen to this, brother. Jesus dealt harsher with the ones who had more and didn't use it to see God. God's going to deal harsher with us if we don't live our lives for him. If we, if we don't boast in God, and you can't boast in God while you're living in sin. You can't. Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees that they would see, receive greater damnation, Matthew 23, 14, because they had more. No, we, the Lord has given us to see more. Today, they use the law to benefit themselves. Is there things that people are getting from the Lord today to benefit themselves? We have people today who are benefiting from the things that the Lord gave them. They should be freely given to God's people, and they're putting a price tag on it. Well, it's not going to go well for them. They did not love and obey the law because they weren't boasting in God. If it didn't help them to grow closer to God, how will it go for us? You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna dabble, that's what I'm saying. If you're gonna dabble with the world, you're in trouble. Today we have people who boast in the institution that they go to. We have people that boast in in the name that they have built up for themselves. Well, this is not going to go well. They'll ask things like, are you saved? Are you baptized? Do you believe in God? Yeah, these are good. What group do you belong to? But will these get you into heaven? Do you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God. And then you're off on the corner sinning. Desire. It's your desire, if it's your desire to, to live for God, the Lord will undergird that. Amen. But for those who don't, this is because of unbelief. And it can cause a person to see Jesus wrong. We have people today that they make up their own kind of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. They, they, have, they talk about Jesus, but when you, you watch them, you wonder, what, what are you talking about? That's not the Jesus I read about. That's because the flesh is so evil and wicked, it'll make up its own Jesus. That's right. Flesh loves to build itself up. Flesh loves to work in an arena where men will build it up and strengthen it. And that, that's what flesh seeks and goes after. The flesh does not look for God. We want to seek God. They miss Jesus. We don't want to miss Jesus. Amen. Just having the law did not help them with eternal life. Flesh will cause you to miss Jesus. Just because you meet every Sunday with a group of serious Christians and you live an unholy life, Believe me, brother, and God, that doesn't go well with God. You come together with people who speak the truth, and then you go off doing your own thing. You're in trouble. You must live a righteous and holy life. If God will use you, he will use you. But if you want him to use you for good, that's going to benefit you. 
You better be working for the Lord and living a righteous and holy life. God will receive you for this. He will help you for this. If you hear my voice today, if you're listening to me today, it's not too late for you. If you've, if you've gone so far, but you're still able to hear my voice, that means whatever you're doing, it's not pleasing to God. Stop it. Stop what you're doing and live and boast in the Lord. No matter what your age is, how long, repent today. Today and live for God. God will not cast out a people that boast in him. So I say live for him, brother. No matter who you are or what your, con your connections are, if you boast in anything but God, you will not be accepted. But, there's a but there, but, if you live your life righteous and holy for God, you deny the flesh, and you live for him, you will be accepted in Christ Jesus. Who doesn't boast in God? All will be cast into a furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 13, 42. You know, this is not just a scare tactic. It's not just a scare tactic for people to live a good life here. The Lord is warning us because we have a good God. He's warning us that this will happen. It doesn't matter what doctor men make up to say, no, you're fine. Just say these few little words and just go on your way and continue your life just the way you did before and God will accept you. See, this is, this is not from God. We have plenty in here in the scriptures to show this is not from him. We are to live a holy, righteous lives before the Lord because he's given us the grace to do this. And if we do, God will honor us, honor our intentions, and we'll be honoring for God by living for him, denying the flesh. And that we will be able to live and die and enter into glory to give honor to God. Amen. It always baffled me how people would say that they were born again believers, but they lived ungodly lives. Every, even from the time I became a, a first time I became a believer. I didn't know a lot, but I knew this, doesn't, this wasn't right. How could people say this? Because you cannot put your focus on something else and go for a long period of time living a righteous and holy life. If you want to live a righteous and holy life, your focus has to be holy on the Lord. You can't take your eyes off of him. You can't put your eyes on yourself and say, hey, I've been doing pretty good. I see that I've been really doing good. That's when you're going to fall. But if you keep your eyes on him, you will stay strong and continue. Not like a roller coaster, but a straight way to heaven. You're, you keep it because the Lord, he does this. He doesn't have a people that's up and down and over here one day and over there. He has a people that's got their eyes focused on glory. A people that are strong and built up because he, this is the way the Lord is. He, he's constant. He doesn't change. He wasn't, he wasn't one way in the Old Testament, and, uh, Old Testament and another way in the New Testament. He hasn't changed one bit. Amen. He's changing us. God has given us grace to not sin. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John 1.17 You can't continue with Jesus and sin. It's not possible. If you are, if you're telling me you're walking with Jesus and I'm watching you live an ungodly life, I'm telling you you're not. I'm telling you you've got your focus someplace else. You may have started off well, but you left Jesus behind somewhere. And you may be working for somebody, but it's not for him. You can't continue with Jesus and sin. Because Jesus keeps us from sin. When you're with him, you don't want to sin. 
when you're with Jesus, you will honor God by living a righteous and holy life. This is the this is just what how, this is the effect of being around Jesus. We believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. Acts 15, 11. So, brethren, I exhort you to continue to live for Christ, to deny the flesh. See trials for what they are is to crush the flesh. God's not against us. He's for us. He doesn't want us to fail. He wants us to succeed. He doesn't want us to, he doesn't want to kill. There are some out there who want to kill you. But it's not the Lord. So we fear him who not only can kill the body, but can also kill the soul and cast it into hell. Just like the Pharisees were not able in their own power to please God. If we're going to go off on our own, we're not going to be able to please God either. So, brother, let us boast in God. Let us live our lives for God that we may be overcomers and successful when the, day, when the Lord comes back for us. Thank you, brother. Amen. Brother Michael has our exhortation.